The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. Today, I present to you a quick preview of my next video in the Titanic Rant series. Now, I used to have a tradition of doing one full Titanic related video around the 14th or 15th of April, in time for the anniversary. Unfortunately, that did not happen last year, due to the entire script getting corrupted and lost. I have since redone most of it, but sadly, due to various Tudor dramas and other projects, I have not had the time this year to complete the full video. However, since 2022 is the 110th anniversary, I feel like I should release some sort of video in time for it. Fortunately, I have previously completed the introduction, so I am repeating what I did with Tudor Rant 4, and will now give you a slither of what is to come. In the meantime, I have been solidly working on Tudor Rant 5, and preparing for Becoming Elizabeth and Ridley Scott's Napoleon movie. So, in regards to Titanic, it may still be a fair while before Titanic Rant 2 is done, but hopefully you might get it in time for next year's anniversary. And so, I will delay you no longer, and give you this preview of Titanic Rant Part 2. Pennywise. Take us behind those icebergs. Moving behind the icebergs. and we'll buff out those scratches. The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. Today, we shall be continuing our voyage of pain, as we examine the next offering in the Titanic Rant series that being Titanic 1996. Yes, you heard me right, 1996, not the more famous 1997 version. This Titanic was a mini-series that aired on CBS, and has gone down as one of the worst Titanic-related pieces of media ever put to film. As usual, the video shall be divided into sections looking at the making of the series, examining the characters and the story compared to the historical facts, the authenticity compared to the history, how it stands as a drama on its own, and finally, a conclusion. Since we have a lot to cover today, particularly in this first section, let us delay no longer and dive into the 1996 Titanic miniseries. The mid-90s was a busy year for Titanic-related media, what with the 85th anniversary of the sinking coming up, and a flurry of productions related to the disaster started to be announced. The most notable one being from this fellow. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. No budget too steep, no seat too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. Cameron, after having dived on the wreck in 1995, announced in December of that year that he'll be making a full feature film on the disaster. And this is where the story of the CBS miniseries sort of starts as well. It has commonly been assumed that CBS decided to cash in on the Titanic hype being generated by the upcoming Cameron production, by pumping out their own TV adaptation beforehand. However, there is not really any solid evidence to back up this theory, and circumstantial evidence seems to point to the company making the series due to the expected hype around the anniversary, rather than the Cameron film. I will state from here on, it has been an absolute pain to find evidence regarding the behind the scenes stuff, since there is barely anything out there. And, coupled with massive technical issues on my end, I was unable to do anywhere near as much digging as I would have liked. But I think I can roughly piece together how this story went. In 1992, Ross Lamanna, who would later become famous for writing the script for Rush Hour, and... not much else, approached some studio executives with the idea of doing a Titanic series, something that he was very interested in. CBS gave him the green light in early 1996 to write a four-hour miniseries split into two parts and he duly wrote a script, which today is publicly available, and is something we shall refer back to in the last section. Unfortunately for Ross, a lot of the original people who had support of the production had left by this point to go and take part in other works, including Ross himself, and he didn't have any real involvement with the series after writing the initial draft. When he was informed that CBS had brought on the woman named Joyce Elliason to clean up the script, he went about his business since polishing and editing was the usual state of things in the industry. I mean, it was just going to be a few edits. What could possibly go wrong? The series was directed by Robert Lieberman, and production was given a sizable budget of $13 million, equivalent to about $21.8 million today, although this would obviously be far below that spent on the Cameron film. The cast for the series would have a few well-known faces, 
Most notably, George C. Scott as Captain Smith, Tim Curry as an Irish steward, and an at the time not too well known actress called Catherine Zeta Jones as one of the main first class passengers. Filming took place in Vancouver, British Columbia, between the 8th of July and the 3rd of September 1996. James Cameron's Titanic also began filming during this time period, and apparently a few scenes of his production were also allegedly shot in Vancouver as well, although I expect these were mainly a few special effects shots and the like, since the bulk of the 97 production was shot down in Mexico. With the CBS one though, again, very little is known of what happened during filming and I've not come across a single behind the scenes picture, save for a few press photos, and the cast themselves have never spoken about it in great length, save for Catherine Zeta-Jones briefly bringing up in a few interviews. One source from the time states that the sinking scenes were replicated by building the deck of the Titanic on three separate bridge sections, placed side by side, that were then lifted up by two cranes. Allegedly, the flooding that happened during one of the takes badly damaged the set, so when retakes were done, extras were strategically placed to hold up the pieces. Although, again, I have not come across any firm eyewitness testimony for this. Amazingly, a mere two months after filming finished, the series aired on CBS, part one on the 17th and part two on the 19th of November. Part one did pretty well in the ratings, but there was a massive drop off for part two, most likely due to the quality of the series and a certain scene that we will address later. Critics were not too kind, with David Bianculli of the New York Daily News stating that most of the ship's operators and owners are portrayed about as sympathetically as those connected with the Exxon Valdez. It did get some awards, but in spite of that the series remains pretty hated amongst Titanic buffs, and with good reason. So, with that out of the way, let us look at how the characters and the story compare to the historical facts of the Titanic and its sinking. Thank you for watching the preview. This has been The Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day.